Joining us in studio is Professor Berry Hanyane, political analyst with the University of the Northwest. We have Maria Sutoy, a criminal attorney, and Sviso Mahlango, ANN7 resident political analyst. And share your thoughts on this story on 11 or tweet us or like our page on Facebook. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Now, earlier on, speaking to Advocate Kharinal, he gives this impression that this is a, at least a relationship that is above board, that he is not not corruptible his credential speaks for himself and he only has the best interest of uh, the majority or you know the country at heart but the alignment with every forum it's as if that uh, the relationship was initiated by every forum if anybody else had proposed it would he have gone there or is it a sense of finding comfort in the ideologies of every forum we'll start with you professor Anyan. look I'll be careful in, in making assumptions along those concerns that you've raised. One, Gerinel is, is, is a person first and foremost. He has his own thinking, he his own ideologies. And I suppose this also opens up some avenue in terms of exploiting that space. What are his own personal political beliefs that may have driven him to a point of associating him with Afri Forum? At the backbone of him being seen as somebody who stood for the rights of those who were defenseless at some stage, and perhaps the hero that he was in the previous cases that he, he, he managed to prosecute so successfully. So, so that, that, that sense of integrity in him will begin to be challenged, I think, for the first time. And, and, and open up some measure of scrutiny, both in his personal belief, personal life, but also that public space that he so dearly holds. Yeah, I mean, it has he limited himself in a sense, as you're saying, that he was greatly revered yeah. as a national commodity when it comes to anti-corruption uh, crusade, uh, with aligning with uh, the Afri Forum, particularly as a private investigator, a prosecuting uh, unit, that it, it is seen as being in direct competition with the NPA. You know, Cindy, as the prof spoke, I was thinking about Kerry now specifically, and, and he's an individual that's passionate about prosecution, and he's passionate about justice. And I'm quite sure that him taking this position, he would have secured some, um, some undertakings from his employer to say, listen, you'll be acting impartially and you'll be acting independently and so on. So that he, and that's why he would say things like, scrutinize me judge us, mm -hmm. have a look at what we do. Mm -hmm. So I'm quite sure at heart he would say, guys, I just want to do my job. I love prosecuting and that's what I'm going to do in this body. Mm -hmm. But you have to, to take cognizance of the fact that the umbrella under which he's operating is Afri Forum. And they do have their groups that they specifically represent and their interests that they represent. So you would expect them to be aligned towards the, 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 their members specifically that require assistance. Yeah, I mean, so, so okay, f yes, it is still early days, but, it, you know, the, it, it's very clear that they will go after the cases that the NPA haven't pursued. Uh, there's a whole myriad of them, and I think uh, top of mind would be uh, the 800 and 783 charges against uh, President Jacob Zuma, uh, that the NPA has been seen to be halting and, and interrupting uh, for the longest time. So the information that Advocate Gerinal has, uh, which was privy to him as an employee of the state can be used uh, in, in prosecuting these cases. Isn't that a conflict of interest? Well, good evening, Cindy. It would definitely be a, a conflict of interest, uh, if not espionage, then definitely treason. Uh, because if he worked for the NPA, which he did uh, for over 35 years, um, he has gotten all the evidence he needs, um, if not on his hard drive, then on his phone, to further prosecute whoever he, he desires to, or now uh, whoever AFRI Forum desires to, is a definite uh, conflict of interest. Um, that is suggesting that someone can leave an organization, inherit all the data and material, and only to use them further for a, with another organization. It's a very dangerous thought. So perhaps what we need to consider is, um, is AFRI Forum and uh, Mr. Kherinel, uh, con 
concluding on a separate government or a regime change? Is this running a parallel government to say the NPA has failed essentially, so um, let's start our own NPA. We'll go after people who seem protected by the Zuma camp or the Zuma administration, and then they would then uh, attempt to take those people to court. So essentially this is another movement, it's another system at being a judiciary, perhaps even a government in waiting. It's a very serious thought, it's a very painful thought for our judiciary to think that someone who's been there for 35 years, even before Mandela came out of prison, knows everything that happened and if they want to find it they will ask him and he's going to use it, particularly with a right-wing group is, uh, is an unsettling thought for uh, South Africans who believe in a democratic state. All right, let's get a response uh, from Luvuyo Omfaku, who is the National Prosecuting Authority spokesperson. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, do you view Gerinal's move to AFRI Forum and uh, running a, uh, a private prosecuting unit as a lack of confidence in the NPA and essentially uh, uh, you know, feeding into the narrative that the NPA is captured, the criminal justice system in itself is flawed? Good evening and to your guests. Um, the NPA is the only uh, constitutionally mandated structure to conduct uh, criminal uh, prosecutions on behalf of the state. There can't be any parallel structure that can, that can run prosecutions on behalf of the state. However, uh, Section 7 of the Criminal Procedure Act has always been there where the NPA has declined to prosecute and a certificate uh, a knowledge prosecution certificate has been issued. Uh, someone can embark on, on, on private prosecutions. Their concept, we don't see it as a, as, as a parallel structure uh, from the NPA. All right, but uh, I was asking you, is this a lack of confidence in the NPA, having served the state with distinction for uh, over 35 years and giving a day's notice after considering this particular offer for almost a year? In his own words, Mr. Gerinal saying that uh, he just needed to move because clearly there's frustration in that certain cases um, are, are overlooked for one reason or the other. During the media briefing that he addressed, he categorically stated uh, that uh, he has got no issues whatsoever with the NPA. He respects the prosecutors who are highly skilled and competent within the NPA. And he's, there's no, it's, that is not a sign of uh, lack of confidence in the NPA. And uh, we've actually dispelled this notion of uh, selective prosecutions. He, in fact, categorically stated that it is a perception, not a fact. Yeah, you're, you're not of the view, so, sorry Marius, um, uh, we'll come to you now. Uh, Lovoya, you're not of the view that this uh, unit could be used uh, to um, settle political scores based on the ideologies of every forum, or do you think this is essentially a necessary so-called civic uh, organization to, uh, thing to do? Our position is very clear. We don't want to get into that space. Uh, uh, the, their objectives, they are best known to themselves. We can only articulate the legal position that, in fact, it is the NPA that will always have a bite of the cherry first. It is only when we decline to prosecute and we issue uh, a certificate that indicates that we have declined to prosecute, that any other prosecution privately can ensue. Without the certificate, there can't be any prosecution. All right, just please st stay on the line. Can we just ventilate the, the fact that if you join an organization, you prescribe uh, to its uh, objectives, the mandate, vision going forward, and every forum, their stance of conservatism mm -hmm. and uh, primarily the protection of Africana, uh, white male, and interest for that matter, mm -hmm. that he will be drawn into that political ideology and potentially even uh, not be able to resist the political settling off scores. I mean, it is a murky kind of space it that he It is possible, in. Cindy, but I think there's a couple of things we have to remember. And firstly, if I may just respond to what Safiso said, we must remember that the MPA has got a very specific, the MPA Act, that governs regarding the protection of information. No prosecutor can leave the MPA with boxes full of information. 
all that is the property of the MPA, and if you divulge any of the information there or you use it, of course, that's a criminal offence. So you can accept that Kerry now left there by himself. It's not to say that he has not gained intimate knowledge in certain matters, but he will not have the paperwork, he will not have the laptops where everything is on. As a private body, all right, you can apply for copies of dockets if you have a peculiar interest in it and if you do this private prosecution. So if you apply, if I act on behalf of a person, I'm entitled to apply for a copy of a docket so that I can prosecute the matter. But a private prosecution is still governed by certain rules. For argument's sake, you have to supply security to the satisfaction of the court. So the accused that's being prosecuted by you has to be covered. His legal fees has to be covered. And you can only prosecute a, 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 private, a, a private prosecution if you have a peculiar interest, which means as a private individual, you must have peculiar interest. So a, a body like Afri Forum in itself can't prosecute in their own name. It will only be the complainant or somebody specifically related to him that could prosecute. Yeah, but the devil in the detail here is that we're sitting with a document called Joining the Dots with Paula mm. Sullivan as the uh, mm. Chief Investigate Prosecutor, officer, Investigating yeah. Officer as well. There is a list of names and targets primarily in the criminal justice uh, or the uh, justice mm. uh, system. Uh, the Luli, the NPA boss, mm. Ron Abrams, uh, going on to the police, mm. etc. Mm. Uh, there it was, you know, and it was also distributed within the, uh, the security agency with McBride or IPED, etc. So how can they, this not be a selective prosecution if the two cannot be separated in the sense that they serve the same uh, organization, okay. as it were? Yeah. You go you go ahead, Prof. <laughs> I, I want to add a bit on that. Uh, we seem to forget that Gerenel was at some stage, uh, in a sense, victimized by the very same NPA. 2008, Trump well, charges well, made against him. Um, could this be then a position for him to draw vengeance against his former bosses? Remains to be seen. What is interesting is that the very same unit that is purported to be existing, it doesn't exist as yet. So the shape, form, and purpose of that might change over time. What is startling at this point in time is that here is a celebrated um, prosecutor who has served the state so well well decorated in a sense, who wakes up one day and says, I'm not going to abide by what public service regulations are in terms of giving 30 days notice to resign. I'm going now. Hmm. Surely there's, there's some message sent there, subtle as it is, that needs to be decoded. And, but we must always remember, any prosecution starts with the state, and specifically the MPA, not the state. The MPA having issued a certificate where they say, we believe there's no prospect of success to prosecute. And any individual who is a complainant in that case, or any individual who's got peculiar interest in that matter can say, I want to have this matter reviewed. And maybe a body like this has absolute existence in our society in the sense that we now have checks and balances in place to say the MPA can't just willy-nilly mm. decline to prosecute, like we saw uh, the application that was made by, uh, I think, the DA and them to the, to the court to say, compel the, the MPA to prosecute our president. Mm. So we have checks and balances in place, and the private prosecution is one of those checks and balances. Are you of the view, I mean, I'm getting a sense that this is ideally something that is necessary in testing uh, the democratic process of protecting the constitution, the country, especially from corruption. Is that the, the view uh, in this relationship with the Afri Forum and uh, the, whether it's ethical or not for a chief a former NPA prosecutor to join a, oh, no. uh, a civilian organization? I, I completely agree uh, on, on the fact that the, the South African constitution or, or the South African economy or society needs that engagement. But I do, however, feel that the um, mad dog or bulldog is not the man uh, for that. Uh, and to tell you about Gerinel, this is an entry into a political space. I think for many years, uh, many right-wing organizations or many right-wing sympathizers have needed a man to hit where the NPA has not hit. Um, that's why Paul O'Sullivan uh, joined Mampela Rampela in Ahang and became the spokesperson. And if Ahang had took off, we would be seeing flames today. But it, uh, it died a natural death a few months after it has started. So you see uh, people who've got a, 
a, a, a reputation, a pupillage reputation in society, join offices that are very big and they ca can take on very big uh, judicial cases in order to slam whips on anybody. So if Akhang had survived, uh, um, O'Sullivan would be there. So they needed another hit and um, AFRI Forum is that. And uh, Mr. Kheri now joining AFRI Forum gives them the sort of knowledge that uh, AFRI Forum needs and it gives them the sort of whip uh, that they feel maybe Mr. Abrams cannot hit at President Zuma and uh, Mr. Kherinel can provide that evidence. And I mean, who in this country can prosecute uh, a case like Mr. Kherinel? If the man has taken down the police commissioner, uh, Mr. Jackie Selebe, uh, you know, and the likes of Creature, um, he's the man that is needed. So he's the trusted agent uh, to deal with this, this, this current government. If it's a regime change that they're after, that's what Afri Forum is gunning for. Okay, let's get a response from Mr. Mfaku, NPA spokesperson. I hope uh, you were able to uh, get a gist of uh, some of the uh, comments made by our panelists mm -hmm. here, essentially saying that there is a, a greater agenda that cannot be ignored in the sense that uh, Advocate now is a, a material commodity, if you will, uh, to also fulfill the uh, AFRI Forum's ideology. But coming also secondly, in the issue of uh, a possible conflict of interest, that being dangerous, based on the uh, nature of sensitive information that Advocate now would have. I wouldn't actually want to get into that space, but I would allude to the fact that uh, uh, the NPA Act is very clear, Section 41, in terms of uh, protection of information. It, every information that is acquired and uh, become aware of as a result of NPA, it becomes the property of the NPA. To divulge or use that information in any other way outside the NPA, it, it is a criminal offense. Uh, the other thing that I want to allude to is the fact that uh, I really do not think that uh, a body like uh, an independent private prosecuting authority is really necessary considering the fact that uh, we've got uh, processes within the NPA. You must recall that prosecutions are conducted at the DPP level in online provinces. Now, if an accused person is not satisfied with the decision of the DPP, he can uh, 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 take up the matter with the national director, make representation to the national director who has got uh, the statutory power to ensure that uh, he intervenes in those kind of prosecutions. If that uh, representation is successful, he can change that particular decision. Now, to have uh, a private prosecution uh, that is uh, an independent structure, I don't think is necessary. But actually, they've got a mammoth task, seeing that they have to show substantial and peculiar interest in line with the legislation. And the fact that a juristic person which does not have any particular legislation that confers prosecutorial powers as confirmed in the, as in the case of the uh, uh, SCP, uh, National uh, uh, Society for Protection of Animals recently by the Concord cannot actually conduct those private prosecutions. Uh, we'll just wait and see and how, uh, on how they're going to actually get up uh, that hurdle. Now, Mr. Mfaku, you're saying that this is a superfluous exercise in the sense that there are adequate structures to deal with uh, issues of uh, prosecuting uh, criminality. But what then, in your view, is the rationale of setting up uh, this particular unit? Look, the, the, the rationale is best known to them. Um, I speak for the National Prosecuting Authority. I do not want to, uh, to postulate. Uh, uh, time will tell. Let's wait and see. We'll actually be in a position to get to understand what's the rationale. Mm. Okay, just uh, your reaction, uh, uh, so unless we, we, you know, we're making much ado about nothing, but you, you seem to strongly feel that clearly there is uh, the impropriety, that it is e unethical for a, a former public servant to be joining a civic organization and primarily in the caliber of a, a prosecutor we have in the uh, There is a now. bizarre... Um, culture or a bizarre trend in this country that people can leave a public office, a very sensitive um, public office, and then go and work in the corporate as if I know nothing and I will not um, implement strategies or give information. Uh, we live in the information age and information doesn't need to be a, an entire library of books and documents. It can all lie in a USB 
kit or USB cable or, you know, documents can be emailed or, or, or transmitted. Things are very easy. You know, you got the same thing when uh, Maria Ramos leaves Treasury and goes to a, a bank like APSA. What information is giving? Could also that be the reason why, um, you know, corporates cannot speak against APSA or Treasury cannot speak against APSA, um, the APSA scandal, because there's a lot of conflict. And so we're seeing, a, we're seeing this trend often where people leave public office and go into organizations uh, which, uh, which in the emblem with otherwise controversial details and those things are sketchy. Now um, um, this advocate comes into this organization. In his mind he knows so much about uh, government that is consequentially treason and could give information or details to things that can destabilize government. If we were in the U.S. discussing this, this would be looked upon as a very crucial thing. You know, if someone can come and destabilize the government. But South Africans are taking it very lightly as if the man is just gone, you know, to deploy his constitutional rights and he can help this country. If he's going to help the National Prosecuting Authority, then he should have stayed in his job as a prosecutor and assisted the National Prosecuting Authority. But I cannot say, well, I want to assist the banks of South Africa, therefore let me start my own bank, which is opposite. Or if I think the police in this country don't work, I'll build my own police station and start arresting people, then why do we have a democracy if we can privatize everything? Why do we have the, the solemn Bible of South Africa called the Constitution if all of us can do as we please? Marius. Yeah, and I, Sophie has got very strong views and I like him, but I differ with him on this. <laughs> I must say, I believe that uh, in this instance, you know, we, I think the professor made the remark that we haven't seen what this body is going to look like, what it will do. And I think only once that is in existence will we truly understand what the gravity of this is, whether this is in fact a body that is completely akin to a specific political views or whether this will be a body that, that functions independently. But there is a space for the fact that private prosecutions can be done. That's always been in the legislation. Remember, the Criminal Procedure Act comes from 1977, and private prosecutions were enacted in, in this specific act. So it's been there all along. So it's not like it's something new. It's just that they want to say, and they want to secure, that if individuals are not being prosecuted for political reasons, they want to reserve the right to consider, in the interest of the South African public, to say, should these people be prosecuted? And time will tell whether that is... But in the, in, the, in the court of public opinion, by, by virtue of establishing this unit, you've already cast the aspersion that the NPA, and we know what the narrative is, is about uh, in terms of a lack of credibility and all sorts of things. So clearly there is a plan to go after the cases that the NPA hasn't but, prosecuted but so far. So it's not a yeah. benign, you know. I agree. But just look at the NPA. Here Abrams becomes the NPA head. What does he do? Uh, the first thing he does is he, he places the lady who has been discredited by a court, he places her in his 2IB, immediately above Harry Nunn and all of them. So immediately she has the final same prosecution. So suddenly you have a flawed individual who our courts have pronounced on should not be an advocate, sitting in that body and suddenly now having oversight over prosecutors like Harry Nunn and them, who suddenly must now say, well, we can't prosecute this person. So there is a political flavor to it, but it might be the fact that they might believe that, listen, the MPA at this stage is a bit, yeah. you know, not no, doing no, just, their mandate. Just, uh, as, as we wrap up, in terms of the legal costs and the funding around Afri Forum, we know, uh, you know, the uh, a suppose a subsidiary to solidarity and uh, we have what uh, some commentators have called uh, ethnic entrepreneurs supporting them. A very interesting business model there. Uh, but just in your response to what Marius was saying, or not saying, around the political influence. <laughs> well, I like Marius too, but um, we do yeah, who's, who's, uh, who's funding Afri Forum? And who's going to pay Gerinel? Um The man served for 36 years. Um, he won't come cheap. Uh, so who is this, you know, uh, morbid source or resource? that is available to fund an organization like um, Afri Forum uh, paying a man like this. Mm -hmm. it's, got very, it's got very deep pockets. And every time um, there is a, a, a deep master, you've got to wonder why he's playing that tune and who must dance. The answer is that there is a regime change and people are investing in it and they will want results. 
and we'll be sitting on this panel in a few months, Marius. That tune is playing and people will dance because there is a threat to, to this regime. I think the South African uh, uh, civil society, but I think also uh, our security measurements must uh, upgrade and see that uh, our country, our security, our state is at risk. Last words, uh, Professor Hanyane. I see you <laughs> totally disagree there, thinking yeah, this is yeah, something that yeah. we need as a democracy. L look, let, let me be frank with you. I think the NPA brought this to themselves. If that house was in good order for the past odd years, without the Jiba saga, without the Breitenbach issue, without the issue of him, Gerenel, being um, subjected to some put up, uh, charges which did, which did not hold water wouldn't be in this state of affairs. All right, uh, I'm sorry, Barry, I'm going to have to interrupt you. Uh, Mr. Mfalco, just uh, your response to the last comment that uh, the NPA essentially deserves this. You brought it on yourself because your house is not in order. That cannot be proper. You need to look at the work of the NPA. Uh, currently, we're sitting at 93.8 conviction rate overall. All the units, they performed significantly above their targets. Now, you, you are you, 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 you drawing an inference that the NPA is in turmoil. That cannot be correct. The, our prosecutors are competent. Our prosecutors are working very hard. And uh, the, 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 the issues at head office are not actually, do not uh, uh, cloud issues at head office and issues at, uh, at a provincial level where the directors of public prosecutions are conducting uh, prosecutions. And the other thing that I want to take a, a dim view on is the issue that uh, uh, Advocate Jiba and uh, Advocate uh, Abrahams are leaders who are not deserving to be occupying those positions. Uh, Advocate Nell was never someone who showed uh, some uh, uh, appetite for, for, for the high office. He understands those are highly uh, experienced and credible prosecutors. Mr. 